So here we go, some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. We've got a brand new update about patch 1.2. What is going on with that? Plus, yes, we are getting that update, but despite that, we have really bad news today that Cyberpunk lead gameplay designer leaves CD Projekt Red. This guy is a senior designer here of course on cyberpunk and in my opinion that is not good news that he has left the project of course during this whole time where they're trying to actually fix it so yeah he would be the one that's most intimately familiar with this game and to have him leave like this is a definite bummer so we're going to talk about that but hey everyone what's happening open world games here hope you're doing good and let's dive straight into the latest happenings first starting off with official news right here from the cyberpunk twitter account it says last week we presented a selection of changes from the upcoming patch 1.2 along with some insights from our developers the update is currently being tested and we will be sharing patch notes ahead of its release so you know what's coming stay tuned for more info of course you guys may remember that they're working on that patch right now a lot of people felt like patch 1.2 so far from what we currently know is also very underwhelming it seems like you guys really would like some more details as to what in the world is inside patch 1.2 again we will be getting full patch notes available by the way as indicated uh by, by the official cyberpunk social media right here full patch notes will be coming later so you know when that drops i got you guys covered but let's talk about this lead gameplay designer leaving he is named andre zadowinski i think it is if i got that wrong my apologies but he says this after almost eight years my time at cd Projekt red has come to an end it's time for the new adventure to every person i've met on the way thank you smiley face it was an honor and pleasure see you around very professional post of course but to see someone like him leave during this time when, you know, they're trying to get Cyberpunk 2077 back up on its feet, so to speak, it's just, to me, not a good thing. And hopefully we don't see more senior developers leaving. Now, interestingly, when Cyberpunk had a rough launch, uh, we saw him have uh, some comments and words for the community and those that were offering up those death threats and things like that. He went on to say this back in the day, I guess you would say. He says, I want to address one thing in regards of the cyberpunk delay. I understand you're feeling angry, disappointed, and want to voice your opinion about it. However, sending death threats to the developers is absolutely unacceptable and just wrong. We are people just like you. So he did not like how the community was reacting to the game being delayed and i also think it was like a combination of things with the investors with marketing uh, money being spent uh with how people reacted with that delay that seated project red did not want to delay the game any further and of course they should have given the current state of the game so it's definitely been uh very very interesting to see uh what has happened uh with you know, CD Projekt Red since the game release. But this, as I have always said, when you start seeing lead developers start leaving projects like this during key periods, personally for me, it's just not good news. It started happening with Anthem. You know, many, many people started leaving. So hopefully we don't see more people leaving this project. That's definitely not a good indication. Now, if you go to the history of Andre right here, you can see he has an extensive history with CD Projekt Red. He was a senior gameplay designer on Cyberpunk, implementing skills and perks, creating pipeline for balancing the game and economy, helping balance the game and economy, working closely with the UI team. And he was also helping out with the RPG mechanics of the game as well as a lead gameplay designer so he was doing a lot of stuff with this game he was heavily involved he would be the one that would perhaps be able to lead people into fixing the game now of course uh i think that they are completely understaffed and they have always been considering you know this game is trying to compete with the likes of gta and what have you and you know those teams are like a thousand people this team is like half of that uh if not half of that so yeah they need more people to help people like Andre. That's just my opinion. They need to hire out and invest the money. Uh, I don't know if the money is just going to the execs or what's going on there, but I think they need to reinvest the money in QA. And, you know, it seems like they are hiring right now. So 
they're either hiring new positions or in this case replacing people as you can see here they're hiring game programmer lead system designer network programmer for cd project red and uh yikes so that's what they have at the top right there currently on cd project red which i think they need to rethink that and get this on the top <laughs> that should be on the top of their job listing page that's just my opinion they need to get the qa up there a little bit more now you know despite this all happening interestingly uh nexus mods it's really active i've been quite surprised a lot of people are uploading tons and tons of mods despite a lot of the issues and these fix you know some things as well i've seen some gameplay enhancements a lot of cosmetic stuff in here as well but you know overhauling the entire game one mod was called like patch which i found hilarious it seems like uh one of these modders actually beat cd project red to patching the game and that mod included a wide variety of fixes to some of the game's biggest problems including you know improving the police uh and things like that so here's the big thing what's happening right now with cyberpunk is that cd project red going forward is competing with their own community uh, in terms of fixing the game. Let's see who will win in terms of quality, offering quality fixes. It's going to be the modders or the official team at CD Projekt Red. I am extremely curious to see how this one is going to work out. Now, we do have community reactions to the lead gameplay designer leaving CD Projekt Red. Let's head on over to Reddit and see what you guys are saying about him leaving. Agonizing Squid says, Feel bad for this dude. This whole release unfinished game, then fix everything post-release. Trend is so effing scumming and puts employees through the meat grinder. Couldn't agree more. We are seeing this happening over and over again. And it is extremely frustrating, of course, uh, to anyone that's like, you know, really rooting for CD Projekt Red. I'm a person that's rooting for them. I've, you know, always wanted this game to turn out uh, really good. And uh, who knows, maybe they, can, maybe they can get it together. But to lose such a key, important person, part of the project is a bummer. Now, I've seen Andre out there replying to people as well. And it's interesting. You see a lot of people uh, congratulating him not congratulating him excuse me wishing him good luck <laughs> uh on his fu future endeavors if you go here yeah powell just all the best to you dude uh and then we have that's in different language and then we have philip weber who says the best of luck for you and this he is from cd project red as well so this is like really upsetting you can see how many people were involved and knew andre here uh, he says, it was indeed. Thank you for everything, your time, passion, all the lessons you've taught me. I will be forever grateful. So, but also there was a post here that indicated that he might have something lined up in the gaming industry, a future there, I would imagine, of course. So we'll see what he takes on next. It's going to be interesting. I'm not too sure if he's going to want to take on a triple A title again, considering how stressful it can actually be. A lot of these developers that take on the AAA titles end up at indie studios. We've seen that time and time again with, you know, the Bioshock devs um, and uh, even like dev devs from Criterion that were working on some of the, uh, what is it, Burnout games. They made their own studio as well. Um, and then the No Man's Sky team, they consider themselves indie devs and they will never have a huge team, they claim. But yeah, it's interesting to see how a lot of the... Uh, dev teams actually pan out when a game launches horribly now uh, let's go over your top comments from one of my most recent videos about patch 1.2 it seems like a lot of you guys were actually kind of happy that they addressed some things and had a actual update so let's talk about that this video was called finally official update about patch 1.2 cd product red dives into new changes to gameplay so let's do this let's go over your top comments about that one right now as we scroll down to the first top comment J Locke says this am i the only one who's hoping that this isn't all they have changed yeah you know i was super underwhelmed by their blog post i was like wait this better not be everything that they are showing here like there has to be more than just this they claim there's full patch notes coming but i'm a little worried given that we're already seeing a lead gameplay designer leave uh now franco says wait please tell me i'm not the only one thinking is that it 
Miguel says, that police drone spawned out of thin air. What the F did they change? The patch better be as confident as the news presentation. Yeah, they're presenting the patches in the form of like a news presentation. It's really interesting and um, I don't know. I, I would think you guys would want something more straightforward, but they're doing it like in a lore way where, hey, Night City has had a massive glitch. <laughs> Perhaps it's like the Matrix or something like that, but um, it's definitely interesting. Some of you guys actually seem to like the way they did it. Oh, but let's keep going with the top comments. Jim says this. Now let's hope they fix something that freaking matters. Uh, Golly says, LOL, so much fluff just to say they increased the distance of the cops spawning around you, tweaked how the vehicles handle, added an unstuck system for vehicle, tweaked how Dodge works. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's a lot of fluff around that article. Now, Blue Dose says, March 31st at 9 p.m. We're sorry. We wanted to desperately deliver the patch in March. <laughs> Uh, Trey Rex says, personally, I don't think they should be joking around, but that's just me. Maybe some people like it. Companies that put out a working game can joke around with customers. There you have it. That's the difference. You got it right there. You know, I think people want a straightforward answer. What's going on with the game? You know, I think it's that simple. They want a list of things that are being fixed. Fallout 76 did this and it was pretty straightforward. They had a blog post and, uh, I think that game's in much better shape now. I need to revisit that game down the road. However, we have this from I Am Tron, who says, I'm thinking adding the game's lore into the news update adds a little charm to the game. It's kind of funny. I like it. So it seems like a lot of you actually do like it. So I guess you would say it's divided with the fan base on how to present it. Honestly, I do think it's creative, but yeah. I just want straightforward news as to what's being fixed and what isn't. And I was underwhelmed completely by that blog post. So hopefully the next big patch update blog post is more significant. And when the full patch notes release, we can go, oh, okay, they're fixing a lot more. Because they said that this was going to be a major update. <laughs> you know, so it should be a major update. That's what I'm saying. But thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more cyberpunk 2077 news updates and open world gaming goodness and i will see you all next time take care